Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to calculate the, the discrete time Fourier transform of a special kind of signal. When you look at, at its graph, uh, you immediately see that it's symmetrical about this guy over here. And sometimes these signals are called type, oops, type 1 signals. And their solution, or rather their Fourier transform, uh, can be obtained in exponential form. So let's say that this guy is going to be called L, uh, n sub naught. And so its answer, its Fourier transform rather, can be expressed in the form minus j omega sub naught times some polynomial that is a function of omega. I'm going to write the DTFT formula here just as a reminder. Summation from n goes from minus infinity to positive infinity x of n e minus j omega n. Okay, so let's start by writing it out and this would be x e j w is equal to that. Okay, so all right, so x two is seven seven minus j w2 because we need to go from 2 to 6 plus 2 times e minus j w3 plus 1 e minus j w4 plus 2 times e to the minus j w5 plus 7 times e to the minus j w6. So the trick to solve these kinds of problems is simply to isolate the middle term and then group those terms who have the same factor. And you'll see what it gives us. Okay, so let's take out e to the minus jw4 plus 7 times e to the minus jw2 plus e to the minus j w6 um, plus 2 e minus j w3 plus e to the minus j w5. Now the next step is to factor out a, uh, the equivalent of the middle term for both of these guys. So we're going to factor out e to the minus jw4 for this and also for the second term. Keep in mind that re the reason we're doing this is that we want to get back to uh, the, the exponential form right here. So it makes sense to um, Take this out and n naught n sub naught is four. Okay, so what we have is e to the minus j w four plus seven e to the minus j w four. Uh, that is e 
to the JW2 positive plus e to the minus JW2 plus 2 e to the minus JW4 times e to the JW1 positive. plus e to the minus j w1. <clears throat> All right. So you might recall that uh, the cosine of x is equal to e to the jwx plus e to the minus jwx, or rather just take out the, the w, it's not necessary. And if we apply this identity, then we're going to get and at the same time, we're going to factor e to the minus jw4. So let's say e to the minus jw4. Uh, and it's going to be times um, 7 cosine of 2 times omega plus uh, 2 times cosine of 2 omega, uh, sorry, 1 omega, two times cosine omega. I made a mistake here. It's uh, over 2. So really what you should have is Sorry about that. Should be 7 times 2 times cosine. And here it should be 2 times 2 times. So the mistake that I made is that I forgot to divide by 2, the identity for the cosine in uh, terms of uh, exponentials. And so what we get is e to the minus jw4 times 14 cosine of 2 omega plus 4 times cosine of omega. And as you can see, this is e to the minus j w n sub naught times some polynomial as a function of omega. Um, now, the, um, if you wanted to get the argument of this, well, or rather, I mean, the, the norm. So you would say that the norm of x to the jw is equal to the norm of e to the minus jw4. That's equal to 1 times the norm of p of omega. And so it would be the norm of p omega evaluated at omega equals omega sub i, whatever omega you want. Um, now, let's say that you want the argument of all that. So you would get 
the sum of the arguments. So you would get the argument of e to the minus jw4, which is minus 4w. The argument is what is multiplying the complex uh, number j. And then you would get the argument of p, o, p of omega, and that's really just some constant times omega. And this is called a linear phase. So you might see this come up in uh, linear phase, finite impulse response filters. And um, that's it. So I'll just quickly circle our answers. So we have basically all of this. And I'll put a PDF worksheet in the description. Thanks for watching.